so from today onwards we are going to start current affairs which will be most helpful for your prelims and the current affairs will be from june 2021 at a stretch till may 2022 so we are going to complete april so in the month of may we will be having the current affair immediately on june 1st you will be having one class for the current affairs of may 2022 so which i identified which will be very helpful for your prelims those i selected and i put forward in this particular session so the pdf of this document will be provided to you so the most important current affairs from june 2021 to may 2022 so today i am going to discuss about june 2021 current affairs so in that month and this current affairs of 50 topics i the source so i want to deliver the source also the source for current affairs most selected topics is i choose from vajiram material i took from vision ias i took from vishnu ias academy monthly current affairs so from this three vajiram vision ias and triple v v v v vajiram vision and vishnu ias academy from this three what are the most expected i am putting forward to you it will be helpful so very quickly we will start and how the further session also will be there i will be explaining for those who are going for prelims 2022 you will be having 10 grand tests you will be having 10 grand tests and this grand test syllabus will be provided means schedule will be provided grand test schedule will be provided within 4 or 5 days offline and online question paper will be provided offline question paper also will be provided online also will be there high standard question paper as i told you in the beginning the same 10 tests will be there now from june 2021 to may 2022 you will be having the current affairs and economic survey discussion you will have budget discussion you will have economic survey discussion you will have budget discussion you will have and economic terminologies discussion also you will be having which will be useful for your prelims and 10 prelims standard question paper so first starting in the month of june 2021 what are all the things which are there in the news number 1 delimitation commission was been constituted by the central government for jammu and kashmir delimitation commission was been constituted by central government for jammu and kashmir any time delimitation commission need to be constituted it is a central government which is having the sole authority number 1 so central government will be having the sole authority for the formation of delimitation commission and a delimitation commission was been constituted in the month of june 2021 for the sake of jammu and kashmir after bifurcation of jammu and kashmir and formation of jammu and kashmir union territory and ladakh union territory so now the number of but for jammu and kashmir there is a legislative assembly so as the jammu and kashmir now became a ut there is a need for revamping the legislative assemblies so the number of legislative assemblies were been increased by this delimitation commission so major function of delimitation commission is increasing or decreasing of legislative assembly member seats or else member of parliament seats from that particular state or center so delimitation commission usually will be headed by supreme court judge supreme court judge not chief justice supreme court judge will be heading this delimitation commission and he will be giving the guidelines with respect to how many constituencies should be there in the state assembly how many constituencies should be there with respect to member of parliament in that state if it is state specific delimitation commission if it is nation specific delimitation commission in the nation how many member of parliament should be there that is a major first thing you have to know about delimitation commission so recently the delimitation commission was been constituted for which state for jammu and kashmir the union government has invited political leaders from jammu and kashmir for a meeting with the prime minister in delhi this may be related to the delimitation process that needs to be held in jammu and kashmir so you understood one point jammu and kashmir got delimitation commission for the sake of revamping the number of mls and the commission if they give any recommendation very important if the commission make running notes if the commission if they make any recommendation that is binding 
it is not subjected to judicial review it is binding that's finished final it cannot be questioned in any court it is binding why because it is placed under ninth schedule of the constitution under first constituent first constitution amendment bill so it is not subjected to judicial review number 1 so this delimitation commission whenever they constitute the recommendations are fine line binding one this current affair which happened so what is delimitation the process of redrawing boundaries of lok sabha and state assembly seats to represent changes in the population why they will go for delimitation sir why they will go for delimitation because in a state if constituencies are there for example in a state 10 constituencies are there and 1 lakh people are there so the constituency should be such that 10 constituency total population state is 1 lakh that means how much population should be there in one constituency 10,000 so equality need to be promoted the delimitation commission will be promoting equality so equal number of population equal number of seats that is the principle which is followed by delimitation commission redrawing the boundaries of the various assembly and lok sabha mainly according to the recent census so that the population percentage will be unaltered will be unchanged this is what so the jammu and kashmir this is the jammu region and this is the ladakh region next topic inland vessels bill 2021 inland vessels bill 2021 we, up to now we have inland waterways up to now we have inland waterways act but no inland vessels act so for the sake of inland vessels bill in june in the june parliamentary session they had come up with this inland vessels inland vessels bill of 2021 the cabinet has been approved for this vessels bill vessels bill so under this vessels bill what are the points which are present number one total 4000 kilometer inland waterways have been operationalized the bill will regulate safety security and registration of inland vessels means within the inland waterways within the inland waterways within the boundaries of india which we have inland waterways this all will be now regulated by a holistic act called as inland vessels act of 2021 unified law for the entire country no state specific law for controlling the vessels which are present in inter waterways inland waterways only one unified law will be there that unified law will be determining regulation safety movement of vessels across india the bill enlarges the definition of inland waters by including tidal water prelims point of view what will include in inland water tidal water also will include national waterways also will be included too what all will constitute inland waterways not only national waterways but also tidal waterways movement with respect to tide also will come under this inland waters the certificate of registration very important the certificate of registration granted under the proposal law will be deemed to be valid in all the states so one unified law one unified registration will be there if we get registration at uttar pradesh the same registration will be valid across india so one unified registration earlier state specific registration like our vehicles two wheeler vehicles state specific registration if i want to go to kerala on my two wheeler compulsory i have to get a permit if i want to go to kerala i want to get a permit already if i get a national permit no problem but if my permit is only state it will be given by the state government then i have to get the permit but now this inland vessels bill 2021 is telling that there will be one registration and the registration will be done by the central government and one registration is valid across india for the movement of vessels for the movement of vessels there will be no need to seek separate permission from states there is no need to seek separate permission from the states if the central government if you are getting the registration from central government we can move across India. but earlier 
state specific registrations were been there but now inland vessels bill 2021 is telling that there is no requirement of any state specific registration if we have central registration it is enough for movement there will be a central database the bill provides for a central database of recording the details of vessels vessel registration crew on a portal so one registry will be there prelims point of view compulsory we have to know this recent bills so according to the recent bill of inland vessels bill what are the provisions it is there one repository one data across india one registration across india vessels inland vessels means tidal waters plus national waterways will come under this next next safety regulation across india under this particular bill the last point it requires all mechanically motorized vessels to be mandatorily registered all non mechanically means through hands all non mechanically propelled vessels will also have to be enrolled at district taluka panchayat means each and every vessel which is on the water should be under the data it might be motorized it might be non motorized if it is motorized it will be in the national registry if it is non motorized it will be in district or taluk or panchayat level so each and every vessel which is on the water each and every vessel which is in the water is data that is what so indian vessels bill of 2021 very important from previous years point of view only i made this content with lot of time it took lot of time for me for this 40 topics it nearly took 16 17 hours so it is useful inland water bills of 2021 inland water bills of 2021 what are the provisions of this next sir na ministry of shipping ah ship ministry am also central deputation of ias officers again this is knowledge point of view important what happened in the month of june there is conflict between this is one group this is another group so this is a leader this is the leader so this leader is getting support from this person but this person is recruited by this person so he got angry i recruited you i trained you i put investment on you and you are supporting my enemy and you are supporting my enemy now what i will do i will take you and i will put near me on deputation i will take you and i will put you near me under deputation then he told and he complained to the madam madam i am working with you very closely he is getting angry i am becoming sandwiched in between what i have to do then okay let me wait what he will do then what he did he sent a letter to west bengal government that we want this person on deputation she rejected it but he want we want him then she told that you resign from ias post i will make you chief advisor to the government i will make you chief advisor to the government then he thought i got a bumper offer he resigned it and he became the chief advisor to mamata banerji so here the issue came whether ias officers can be taken deputation according to the whims and fancies of central government whether ias officers can take deputation according to the wish of central government why because this man is asking for this man so this woman is rejecting i will not give my man but he is telling that he is helping you a lot so i want so in the same way lot of issues happened across india where how to go to deputation some people they don't want to stay in state government they want to go deputation to delhi some people who are very close to state government opposition party people the central government want to pull these people to the center so that their intelligence or their knowledge can be used for center so what is this deputation i will give you clarity today when an all india service officer who is recruited by the center and posted in the state his transfers his appointments is determined by the state government his transfer his appointment is determined by the state government once he got allotted cadre to the state now center have no role but if center but if center asks for a deputation but if center ask for a deputation we want that all india service officer to work at central secretariat then it is not the monopoly of the central government 
the central government and state government both should come to a consensus then only this person can go on deputation to center or else this person can go on deputation to another state there is a role of state also up to now everyone thought that the center is monopoly center is not monopoly center and state both should come to an agreement for the sake of due for the sake of taking any officer on deputation why i took this question it is happened in the month of june before elections in the time of elections of west bengal this is a previous question if it is not visible i will tell you consider the following the chief secretary in a state is appointed by the governor of that state the first question is the chief secretary in a state is appointed by the governor of that state the second statement is the chief secretary in a state has a fixed tenure 2017 question this is 2017 question this is which of the statements given above are correct chief secretary he also worked as chief secretary to the west bengal so relevantly they will ask the question 2017 also there is a question there is a issue happened with chief secretary of karnataka so they asked about it answer is the chief secretary in a state is appointed by the governor no the chief secretary is not appointed by the governor the chief secretary is appointed by the chief minister i want my people under me so there won't be any constitutional appointment for the chief secretary it will be the governor why because common sense what is common sense all the officers all the as officers should work for whom government so the government want which as officers who are good who are cordial who are helpful to the government so why come the governor will come in between so it is a state government who will decide who should become the chief secretary number 2 tenure there is no tenure for chief secretary i liked him for time being 10 days i liked him 11th day i am not liking him i will remove him administrative convenience i am the chief minister people voted for me this is my administrative convenience so that i will keep any person as my chief secretary or i will keep any person as a secretary to the ministers or departments so the appointments will happen based upon the appointments will be happen based upon the administrative convenience of the state government so no fixed tenure fixed tenure means compulsory tenure no fixed tenure so like this the current affairs we have to link the outgoing west bengal chief secretary bandyo padhyaya has been the subject of tussle between the center and the west bengal government as the state government appointed him as a chief advisor to the chief minister a member of the service all india service dealing with budget work prelims point of view very important whoever is dealing with budget or whoever is working as a full time member of a committee committees will be there no parliamentary committees standing. standing committees so any member who is working as a permanent member to the committee or any member who is working to the budget if he is to retire there is a chance for retirement that member can be that member service can be extended by only 3 months so the person who is working in the parliamentary committees and the person who is working for the budget documentation those who are at the verge of retirement they will be getting a 3 months extension but chief secretary at the time of retirement if you want to serve more and the state government also want to serve more with the permission of central government can get 6 months of extension prelims point of view very important so chief secretary will get 6 months of extension with the permission of central government with the permission of central government see for an officer posted as chief secretary of state extension can be for 6 months extension of service for a period not exceeding 3 months in public interest with prior approval of central government it might be any secretary or any member who is working in the budget or any working in the parliamentary committee or he might be chief secretary also chief secretary for 6 months any member or secretary for 3 months only with the prior approval of central deputation in normal practice the center asks every year every year the center will ask that you state government whom you want to send on deputation to secretariat give me the list so they will submit the list they will check the list and the central government will 
approve some of them and call them on deputation. Now you tell me if state government is submitting few names means whether state government is accepting them for deputation. So state government is accepting them for deputation from that list central government also find some names and that means both are approval for the sake of deputation. So what we learnt today for the deputation it is not the central government or not the state government who is final it is the synchronization of both the center and the state who are responsible for deputation. Now the center asked every year for an offer list of officers of the all India service willing to go on central deputation after which it selects officers from that list. An officer may with the congruence of the state government concerned and the central government be deputed for service under the central government or another state means both center and state both should agree that is what the conclusion is when there is a con this is a live example which happened in the month of june 2021 at the time of elections of west bengal digital media content regulatory council what happened at that time if you remember june 2021 one one ott came one web series tandav in june tandav came one web series in netflix lot of issues happened with respect to that in prime ah, okay mcq correct <laughs> not Netflix prime it seems for me negative marking the Tandav movie created ruckus the Tandav movie created ruckus by because Hindu sense sentiments were being hurted Hindu sentiments were being hurted then the government thought that now too much is happening in OTT full form of OTT over the top, over the top. OTT over the top so we have to control this OTT so government came up with a unique council which is called as digital media content regulatory council which is called as dmcrc prelims point of view digital content regulatory council mainly deals about what it mainly deals about the content which is present in the ott platforms has been created by the indian broadcasting and digital foundation this is very important for upsc prelims point of view this is formed by which body this is under which body that we will that facts are important so this digital media content regulatory council has been created by indian broadcasting and digital foundation as an industry led self regulatory body for digital ott platforms over the top as a mandate under information technology intermediate guidelines and digital media ethics code rules of 2021 it is a second tier mechanism at the appellate level and is similar to broadcast content complaint council mainly the duty of this digital media content regulatory council is checking the content of ott how a three level body will be there a three level body will be there at the grassroots level there will be a grievance redressal by the publisher producer himself will be having one publisher who will be checking the content first he will clarify then it will go to second body which is called a self regulatory body under broadcasting then it will be cleared number 3 ministry of information and communication ministry of information and broadcasting central government oversight three tier grievance redressal mechanism means at three levels if i have a complaint then i can give the complaint on these three levels at the publisher level or at the level of self regulatory body or at the level of central government at three levels i can give a complaint on ott and the complaint will be taken according to what digital media content regulation so suddenly they will ask dmcrc is in news recently it deals about what digital media content they will not give the full form digital media content regulatory council they will not give the full form but dmcrc is very famous so we have to understand that it is to control social media it is to control ott it is to control print media it is to control visual media answer is to control ott all are near to control social media no to control print media no to control visual media visual media no it is to control OTT. next tulu language it is also in the news what happened in june 2021 lot of agitations were been happening in karnataka mainly in the regions of mangaluru in the regions of mangaluru western ghats western part of western ghats which is which is dominated by tullu people 
and that particular region is also called as Tullu Nadu. Who are these people? These people are from Uttara Canada, Mangaluru, Kasargo district of Kerala. These people, they speak Tullu language. So there is a demand that our Tullu language which is very famous, our Tullu language which is very famous is neglected. So they are demanding for to get a position in 8th schedule of the constitution. What is 8th schedule of the constitution? Language. Languages. So already 22 languages are there. So these Tullu people are demanding that we also want a constitutional recognition. So please add me into. So first statement. Tullu is a language which is part of Tamil Nadu. Tullu, Tamil Nadu uh, might be correct. Tullu is a part which is of Karnataka and Kerala. Their demand is to enter into 8th schedule of the constitution. A Twitter campaign. Nothing. Uh, Bhumika, she listen. First is, if I want to complain on OTT, first I will go to publisher level, means producer. Publisher means producer here. I have an issue. Please, can you solve it? If they don't bother, then I have an information broadcasting council, which is self-regulatory body. I will complain there. If then also no one bothered, then I will go to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, OTT. They have to take care. If they don't take care, then I will go to Supreme Court. When I go to Supreme Court, I will also get a compensation. In that way, we can control the content on OTT platform. So much Maya, Bhumika, we have to do a lot of topics very quick, very quick. Tullu language, see, a Twitter campaign demanding official language status in Tullu, people came on roads also. In Karnataka and Kerala received an overwhelming response. Tullu speakers have been requesting the government to give Tullu the official language status and include in 8th schedule of the constitution. Up to now, how many languages are there in 8th schedule of the language? 22. Which of the following is not present in 8th schedule of the constitution? Which of the following is not present in the 8th schedule of the constitution? I will tell you. Assami, Bengal, Gujarat, Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Konkani, Malayalam, Manipuri, Marathi, Nepali, Oriya, Odia, Punjabi, Sanskrit is also there. Sanskrit is there. Hindi is there. Sindhi, Tamil, Telugu, Urdu, Bodo is there. Bodo, Santali, Maithili, Dogri. So, what is confusing? Hindi is there. Hindi is not a national language. Hindi is a constitutional language which is part of 22 languages. According to the original constitution of 1950, and Sanskrit is also part of 8th schedule. English, English is there, English is there, English is not there. Now there is a demand for which language? Tullu language. Yes. Tullu is a Dravidian language spoken mainly in the regions of Karnataka, Dakshina Karada, Udupi, and Kerala Kasargo districts. This region is informally known as Tullu Nadu. And one more thing. Tullu Nadu, there is a demand for separate state also. Earlier, there was a demand for separate state called as Tullu Nadu, which is called as regionalistic demand. Most highly developed language of the Dravidian family, Tullu is not an official language in the country, but the Karnataka government introduced Tullu as a language in schools a few years ago. It is not an official language, but a medium is present in Karnataka. This is about Tullu. Why it is in the news? A Twitter campaign and the people came out of the road to have a recognition. What type of recognition? Constitutional recognition. When I will get constitutional recognition for a language? If it is present in the 8th schedule of the land. Model Tenancy Act. You know, APMC Act. Agriculture Produce Market Committee Act. In 2013, APMC. What is that? APMC. Model APMC, I told. See, agriculture is a state subject. Agriculture is a state subject. But if you, if you remember, Agriculture related law, which is called as Agriculture Produce Market Committee Act of 2013, which is named as Model APMC, was made by central government. Sir, how central government can make a law on agriculture? Why? Because agriculture is a state subject. That is the reason we use the word called as model. Model means example, a model act, a example act. How APMC Model Act was been made in 2013. Similarly, in the month of June 2021, the government of India made Model Tenancy Act. 
government of india made model tenancy act which, which means that which means that all the state government why because land model tenancy tenant land house construction land which is subject state subject then how come a central government can make that is the reason the word is model so it is an advisory this type of law i am advocating central government is telling that this type of law i am advocating all the state governments please follow this model act so this is not binding how model apmc is not binding in the same way model tenancy act is not binding why because tenants of the land tenants of the houses tenants of the constructions are under state list that is the reason the word is model model tenancy act which means that now onwards house rents i want to go to ashok nagar i want to go to ashok nagar of hyderabad i want to go to old rajendra nagar i want to stay owners are asking for 12 months of rent but i want to only stay for one month there in whom i want to tell that i am going for studies but one month i will rotate to delhi and i will come back again i will tell that atmosphere is not good food is not good so i came back but what the house owner is telling okay your wish but you pay 12 months of rent so how to control lot of complaints went to narendra modi sir what we have to do i want to see delhi but they are asking me to stay for 12 months i thought i will take the fees and i will enjoy and i will rotate around delhi and i will go then i will tell that my my health is not good temperature is not suitable food is not good they are giving rotis chapatis then narendra modi thought very seriously so something we have to do then he told that we will make one tenancy act but it is model but it is model now you go to your state government and show this model tenancy act and tell them to do the same so what it is now onwards advances deposits for residential houses will be only 2 months of advance only 2 months of advance if it is commercial building then the advance deposits will be 6 months such sort of rules and regulations were been made a central repository will be made the complete data will be made with respect to who are the people who are giving houses on rent so everything will be data is everything will be present with the government the list of rents they are collecting the amount of deposits they are taking so that everything will be regulated and the tenant will not be affected the union cabinet chaired by prime minister narendra modi approved the model tenancy act to be sent to the states and union territories to enact legislation or amend laws on rental properties on rental properties the model tenancy act would prescribe the norms for lease agreements deposits dispute handling and other aspects of rental properties setting up separate rent authorities courts and tribunals in each district to settle disputes so there will be a separate tribunals there will be separate rental authorities to solve the disputes between the owner and the tenant so there will be a rental authorities there will be separate tribunals also according to model tenancy mandatory for there to make a written agreement between the property owners and the tenant it would be submitted to the concerned district rent authority and the district rent authority is deputy collector so there will be deputy collector all the agreement should go and submit to the district rent authority mainly it is helpful for commercial establishments 6 months of advance everything is written all the documents are with the rent authority of the district so safety will be there so whenever he, the owner want he cannot throw out this is about land tenancy act time limit maximum limit for security amount for tenants at a at residence 2 months for for commercial it is 6 months tenant will not be evicted during the continuance of tenant in between he cannot throw in between he cannot throw if there is a need to send him one month of notice should be there according to this model tenancy so first what you have to remember first you have to remember that the model tenancy act was been made under the state list by the central government hence it is called as model why because it is the state government who is having the privilege to make the laws on land in june 2021 what happened government barred government barred 
officials from publishing sensitive information. What does it mean? It mean that, what does it mean? It mean that whoever the employees working in security agencies like intelligence bureau, research analysis wing, national security guard, CBA, CID, etc. After their retirement, after anyone after retirement, they will become free. They start taking revenge on their organizations. So, there is a problem happened with security agencies. So, some of the senior officers started giving the information or selling the information, it will happen. So, now the government made a resolution that all the employees who are working in the security agencies, they should not give the official information after retirement also to outsiders. If it is required with the head of the authority, permission only you can give the information. If not, every, every information is confidential, every information is classified, every information is secret. But IAS lucky, IPS lucky and Indian Forest Service lucky. Except All India Service Officers. All other officers are not entitled to share their information after the retirement except All India Service Officers. Department of Personal and Training has amended the Central Civil Services Pension Rule of 1972. It barred officials to disclose sensitive information as it would jeopardize the sovereignty and integrity of India. So, no one should give the information after their retirement. This can be used for internal security. Global minimum corporate tax. What is this? Global minimum Global minimum corporate tax, GMCT. What is this global minimum corporate tax? What is C? What happened? Round tripping of funds. What will happen? Shell companies will be established mainly in tax heaven countries, Cyprus, Honduras, Ireland. So, some of the countries are there where there will be tax havens. Means, the tax rates will be very less or zero. Dubai also. Then what will happen? I am a multinational company. But my business is more in India. My business is more in India. My consumers are more in India. My clients are more in India. But the corporate tax in India, how much? Corporate tax percentage kitna hai? Yes, Mauritius also. Corporate tax percentage is how much? Yes. Corporate tax percentage is how much? Oh, 40 is too much, man. Corporate tax. No, in India, general corporate tax I am talking about. 22 percentage. 22 percent is a corporate tax. Then what I will think? Oh, so now I will establish an office in Mauritius. In Mauritius, I will show that now onwards I will shift to my headquarters to Mauritius. I will shift to my headquarters to Mauritius. Only my establishment will be in India. My offices, branches will be there in India, but my headquarters will be in Mauritius. In Mauritius, there is no corporate tax. So, what I will do? Whatever the profit I am generating, I will show it, it got generated through Mauritius. It is just a branch offices which are there, but the profit is accounted in. Mauritius. But Mauritius corporate tax is zero. So, I am the money is becoming white and I am no need to pay the tax. This is a very big problem. Why they are sir means they are they are all a tourist hub. For example, Mauritius is a tu tourist hub. They have very good revenue. They want more companies to come. If, if I want more companies to come, I will tell that there is no tax. So, more companies will come and more development will happen. But this is a negative for countries like India, developing countries like India. Why? Because Tax, tax not paid, tax evasions, tax evasions will happen. So, all the countries came together, they discussed how we will do, what we will do. So, then what we will do, we will have one common global minimum corporate tax. Every country who is having a multinational company, whether it is a tax haven or not, they have to charge 15%. They have to charge 15 percent. Then what will happen? They will not go to Mauritius. 
Why? Because there is also no 15% corporate tax is there. Then better what I will do? More 7% only no extra. I will be in India only. I will be more happier here. No? Do I have to show the funds? I have to show these all things. Mainly if I miss, I will miss 7%. So, this global minimum corporate tax is helping the governments to get the tax back. Now, there is no tax heavens. Why? Because every country should have minimum 15 percent tax. That is global minimum corporate tax rate. This one. Global minimum tax deal. 136 control sub country supported deal except Kenya, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Nigeria. Global minimum corporate tax, how much percentage? 15 percentage. Remove loopholes for MNCs to shift tax revenue to tax havens. When they decided, in the group of seven G7 meeting, they decided that now we will have a global minimum corporate tax of at least how much? 15 percent. Who are G7? UK, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, USA. Very important prelims point of view now. Why? Because the G7 countries are angry on Russia. In June, they are going to meet 48th G7 summit is going to happen in Germany in the month of June 2022. And that G7 summit in 2022 in the month of June in Germany, they are going to target Russia. So, G7 is very important for your prelims. What are the countries? Remember like this, USA, Canada, neighbors. The next what? UK, Germany, France, Italy, neighbors and seventh country is Japan. Seventh country is Japan, G7 countries. Earlier it was G8 countries, Russia came out. I am not going to follow the hegemony of United States of America. So, they told that we will come out and now it is only G7. It is a direct tax, corporate tax imposed on the net income of profit that enterprises make from their businesses. The global minimum corporate tax rate will ensure taxes were paid in the countries where business operated. It may apply to overseas profit also. So, what is happening now? So, mainly now the tax is not getting evaded. The tax is not getting evaded. Every enterprise, every corporate should pay minimum 15%. How much is that? 15%. Next, fugitive economic offenders. Fugitive Economic Offenders Act of 2018. Who are these great people? Who are these role models? These three people are the role models. Fugitive Economic Offenders. Nirva Modi, Vijay Malia, Lalit Modi. What is this fugitive word? Fugitive word means the economic offenses. Fugitive word means economic offenses which are mainly with respect to bank frauds, the fraud of higher amount, economical frauds. The economical frauds are named by fugitive. Fugitive is a synonymous word for criminal, but this fugitive word we mainly use for economic offenders. So, how we are going to control this fugitive economic offenders? A act was been made in 2018. At the UN General Assembly special session on challenges and measures to fight corruption, India raises a serious issue of fugitive economic offenders and assets which flee across national jurisdiction. Fugitive economic offenders are those against whom a warrant for arrest for a scheduled offence has been issued by any Indian court and who has left India to avoid criminal prosecution or judicial process. Who left India? Economic offender who left India on whom a arrest warrant was been released by a court. That particular Offender is called as economic offender or fugitive economic, fugitive offender. No this much years of jail or this just if arrest warrant is been released and the crime is economic crime and he left India, these three things. Economic crime, number two, a arrest warrant has been released, number three, who left India. If these three are together, that particular person will be called as Fugitive economic offender. Under which act? No. Prevention of Money Laundering Act of 2002. Scheduled offense. Refer to a list of economic offenses contained in the schedule to this act. Some of the offenses listed 
in the act are counterfeiting government stamps or currency money laundering transactions defrauding creditors after hearing the application a special court designated under prevention of money laundering act 2002 may declare an individual as fugitive economic offenders so now you have to understand this listen carefully i did a fraud according to prevention of money laundering act of 2002 a person will be called as a fugitive economic offender if if the same has been also told in fugitive economic offenders act of 2018 if i did economic offense on me a arrest warrant has been released as well as he left india so what are the offenses is mentioned under prevention of money laundering act of 2002 but under this fugitive economic offender act for the first time the property belongs to this fugitive economic offender will be taken away for the first time the property belongs to this for example vijay malya is having a house at hyderabad of 1000 crore before this act no one have the power to touch the property but now they have the power to touch the property they can say take the property they can sell the property and they can give the property to the losers who are the losers like rbi who are the losers like sbi who are the losers like canara bank so for those banks they can pay their loans so for the first time confiscation of property is added under fugitive economic offenders what is that confiscation of property it was not there earlier it is there now it may confiscate it may confiscate property which are proceeds of crime binami properties and any other property upon confiscation all rights and titles of the property will vest in the central government free from encumbrances such as any charge of the property the central government may appoint an administrator to manage and dispose of this properties next prelims point of view very important prelims point of view very very important just to remember the name killing curve just to remember the term called as killing curve what is killing curve see the graph the amount of carbon dioxide em emitted the amount of carbon dioxide emissions from time to time time to time the calculations of amount of carbon dioxide emissions that curve is called as keeling curve that curve is called as keeling curve the amount of carbon in earth's atmosphere in may 2021 reached its highest level in the modern history a global indicator showed the keeling curve is a global benchmark for carbon levels in the atmosphere it is a graph that represents the concentration of carbon dioxide in earth's atmosphere since 1958 at the mauna loa observatory in hawaii where this calculation is happening mount loa at hawaii this calculation is done where from 1958 mount loa mauna loa observatory at havana hawaii at hawaii so here there is observatory here the calculations are happening with respect to what carbon emissions from when 1958 so that calculation of carbon emissions is which curve keeling curve see it is the longest uninterrupted instrumental record of atmospheric carbon dioxide in the world and it is commonly regarded as one of the best and most recognizable products of long term scientific study electoral bearer bonds scheme what happened in the month of june 2021 electoral bonds was been released what is this i will tell you only the citizen of india a limited time period will be there a limited openings will be there for 15 days a designated branch will be there so any citizen up to 2000 in cash he can deposit more than 2000 he has to do online transfer for what for buying the bonds electoral bonds electoral bearers electoral bonds so this scheme was been again reopened in the month of june at the time of west bengal elections what it will do more than 2000 i will do online transfer and i will buy, i will buy a bond then what happened there will be also a time period within the time period they have to put in the account and they have to take the money that is called as electoral bond 
notice notified the electoral bond scheme in 2018 may be purchased by a person mainly indian citizen who is a citizen of india or incorporated body established in india a person being an individual can buy electoral bonds through check digital payment either singly or jointly with other individuals by approaching the banks the donor donates this bonds to the political party the donor donates to the political party more than 2000 it should be online less than 2000 it should be by it can be by cash by online also they can do but limit is only up to 2000 by cash electoral bonds shall be received only by the political parties registered under section 29a of the representation of people's act again very important point for whom i can give sir for whom i can give means not to a new political party i cannot buy electoral bond of a new political party already they should contest election and they should get minimum 1% of the votes valid votes if 1% of valid votes are polled for that political party only i can buy the electoral bond if not electoral bond i cannot buy why because if not what will happen it will be like a black money app becoming white money so electoral bond only to those political parties who are recognized under representation of people's act number 1 number 2 and who already contested the elections and who got a minimum votes of 1% should have secured not less than 1% of the votes polled in the last general elections to the house of the people or the legislative assembly of the state the electoral bonds shall be encashed by an eligible political party only through a bank account with a authorized bank this is electoral bond tell me what is electoral bond what you understood quickly electoral bond a bond i will buy for a political party which political party who is recognized by the representation of people's act 1951 and already they had they, they need to contest the elections and they need to get the minimum votes of 1% and more than 2000 by online transfer less than 2000 by cash a limited time will be there within the time i need to buy the bonds these bonds i will send to the political parties and the political parties also a minimum time will be there at that time only they have to put and they have to draw the amount why because scanning so when the limited time period is there when they are depositing the the bank officials can scan whether it's a correct money or negative money for that purpose this electoral bonds is there it is nothing but for the first time it is innovated in 2016 and got impetus from 2018 it will be lapsed it there is a, for every bank there will be a, a gc account will be there which is called a general charges account will be there which is called a parking lot this amount will go to the parking lot of the bank at the time of holding it will go to the rbi it will stay with the rbi if the time has been lapsed protection of intellectual property online recently ravi shankar a union council of minister of india his twitter account was been blocked for one hour why means copy paste what we learned copy paste so this particular protection of intellectual property online is against copy paste is for protecting of intellectual property for example if i work hard and if i made a content in the website someone will copy and someone will take the information that is called as violation of intellectual property right ravi shankar did the same the council of minister did the same and his account was been blocked for one hour the best example torrent what is torrent movies download someone's content they are down they are uploading here and the movies are getting download to avoid that to avoid that we have digital millennium copyright act under which act the ravi shankar's account was been blocked means digital millennium copyright act of united states of america why because twitter comes under the jurisdiction of united states of america so according to digital millennium copyright act once content once online content cannot be copied by another man so prelims point of view digital millennium copyright act deals about what digital millennium copyright act deals about what number 1 number 1 ott platform number 2 google information number 3 online content number 4 online classes online content the digital millennium copyright act is a 1998 law passed by usa it is among the world's first laws recognizing intellectual property on the internet on the internet 
It oversees the implementation of two treaties signed and agreed upon by the member nations of World Intellectual Property Organization in 1996. One, yes. Need for treaty, rapid commercialization of internet in late 1990s, content could be copied by unscrupulous websites or users who did not generate content on their own like torrent. They will not generate, they will not make, but they will copy and they will put in their website like torrent. So, in order to stop it, what is the law? It is there. Digital Millennium Copyright Act of United States of America. Such type of act is there in India, then what will happen? In India also, we can protect online digital intellectual property. Yes or no? Compulsory intellectual property, copyrights, patent, this you have to look into it. The meanings of this. Debt to GDP ratio, very interesting this is. Try to understand. What is debt to GDP ratio? See, for example, this classroom is a country. In this classroom, the total goods and services when I calculate it is coming 1000 rupees. That is called as the GDP. But from this 1000 rupees, when I calculate it is 1000 rupees from this, what I understood is the total 1000 rupees is going for expenditure and for the running of the country, I am taking more 50 rupees loan from other country. So, what is happening out of my complete GDP, my GDP in my expenditure became 1050. That means, out of 100 percent of the GDP which I earned, out of 100 percent of the amount which I earned, 50 percent is loans. So, for the running of the country, for the running of the country, how much loans I am taking is called a GDP to debt ratio. For example, last year our GDP to debt ratio was 51.6 percent. Now it is increased somewhere around 56 percent. Means out of 100 rupees which I am earning, 56 rupees is debt. Out of 100 rupees I am earning, from which 56 rupees is debt. So, whether the country is slowly, slowly collapsing or not, in a house, in a house, 1000 rupees is useful for the running of the family. In the process, for to run the family for one month, my 1000 rupees salary is not sufficient, I want 1500 rupees. So, how much percentage extra I took from my salary? 50 percent. So, that extra amount for the survival, the amount which I am taking is called as debt to GDP ratio. Oh, out of this much GDP, this much loans are there outside. Or in simple language, I will tell you, very simple language. Country's GDP is 1000 rupees, loans is 500 rupees. My earning is 1000 rupees and my loans is 500 rupees. How much percentage of my 1000 rupees? 50 percent. So, 50 percent I have to pay to the loans only. Out of my GDP of 1000 rupees, 500 rupees are loans. So, how much is the debt to GDP ratio? 50 percent. By seeing this debt to GDP ratio, whether I will understand whether the country is collapsing or not. So, the, the, the debt to GDP ratio will give us an awareness of oh, how the country is performing, how inflation will give us awareness, how the prices are skyrocketing. In the same way, the performance of the country can be calculated by debt to GDP ratio. Ratio of country's public debt to its gross domestic product. It indicates a country's ability to pay back its debt. I have 1000 rupees, my loans is 500 rupees, but my expenditure is 1000 rupees. Per month, my earning is 1000 rupees, my expenditure is 1000 rupees, but my loans is extra 500 rupees. If I might pay my loan 500 rupees, if I become my debt to GDP ratio 0, but again I have to take 500 rupees again for the survival of the month house that is called as debt to GDP ratio. Is total liabilities of central government contracted against consolidated fund of India? Union government debt so to 58.8 percent of the GDP in fiscal year 2021 from 51.6 percent. It is increasing, it is increasing. But shall I tell you good thing? The good thing is India is somewhere around 58 percent. Japan, Canada, their debt to GDP ratios are high. Italy, Portugal, Greece, 
Spain, their debt to GDP ratios are very, very high. Compared with those countries, we are safe. Compared with those countries, we are better. That we can tell. So, if there is any question, GDP, debt to GDP ratio, how India is performing with respect to Western countries, what you will say? A statement is given. Like this analysis means trend analysis. Trend. Debt to GDP ratio, how it is performing with respect to Western powers, we are better off, we are well off. Tax inspectors without borders, simple this is. Bhutan, tax inspectors without border, program was launched in partnership with in India, what is this? Tax inspectors without border is a capacity building program, which is a joint initiative of, the names are very important, which is a joint initiative of United Nation Development Program and Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development means UNDP plus OECD together is equal to tax inspectors without borders. This both organizations UNDP and Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development came together mainly for what? Simple, mainly for capacity building of the tax inspectors of other countries. Oh, you people are collecting taxes properly. Bhutan, they are unable to do. For example, how you cleared your prelims this many times, I am unable to clear. So, please help me. How you are collecting this much taxes, we are unable to collect the taxes, somewhere we are missing. Don't worry, I will come. And they are coming to the tax inspectors and they are giving their training. They are sharing their experiences, capacity building. So, this Tax inspectors without borders means nothing but uh, the experience of successful tax authorities will be shared with the other countries. So that what will happen? They will also, their capacity will increase, their knowledge will increase. So they can also collect taxes properly. Oh, whose initiatives this uh, tax inspectors without borders was been formed? UNDP plus OECD. What is the main purpose? To educate. Very good, to educate, to, to, to create capacity, capacity building, the same thing is there here. So, you, sometimes you only to read everything, only to the point, Achha, tax inspectors without borders means capacity buildings of the tax inspectors of other countries, by one country. Whose plan is that? UNDP as well as OECD, international relations, United Nations Secretary General for the first time this man. For the first time, this man, second term, second term, up to now, no United Nations Security Council, Security General became second term Secretary General. He is the first person called as Antonio Guterres, second term. How the election will happen, prelims point of view? There will be United Nations Security Council, in which five members will be permanent and ten members will be non-permanent. But here the permanent members will be enjoying the veto. If one person also reject, he cannot become the Secretary General. All the five members supported him, all the non-permanent members also supported him and he went for elections of United Nations General Assembly and this person was been re-elected as Secretary General. Why it is important means up to now no Secretary General came for second term. He is the first person who came for second term. Approved 9th UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres for second term for 5 more years. He is appointed by UN General Assembly on the recommendation of UNSC. The 5 permanent members of the 5 nations strong UNSC are the most powerful players in the process of selection of Secretary General as any of them can eliminate a candidature by a veto. But no one went for veto power. Veto means rejection. Who are the five permanent members of UNSC? USA, UK, China, Russia, France. These five people have the power to veto. And the ten people also should accept it, they accepted it. Then they went for elections for UNGA, then everyone accepted Antonio Guterres as second term. Why I am discussing only about him? Because he is a second term, first UN Secretary General. G7, I discussed already, I told you. G7 is also important. What are the countries which are there in G7? UK, USA, Canada, Germany, Italy, France as well as Japan. 
which conducted in the month of June 2021. The G7 summit will be conducting in the month of June 2022. In 2021, where it happened? UK. In 2022, where it will happen? Germany. Take this. In 2021, where it happened? UK. In 2022, where it will happen? Quick revision, quick revision. Don't get bored. It's not movie. It's content, information. If you want to clear prelims, not only entertainment. Entertainment will not clear prelims. Content will cre create prelims. Weapons, chemical weapons convention. What is this chemical weapons convention? Tell me. Have you heard it? Chemical weapons convention? It is in the news. See, first sentence, what I am mentioning? In news. The chemical weapons convention, international chemical weapons watchdog. Chemical weapon. Chemical told the UN Security Council that Syria had likely or definitely used the chemical weapons in 17 cases. It is an arms control treaty administered by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, an intergovernmental organization based on The Hague, the Netherlands. This multilateral treaty entered into force in 1997. It has 192 state parties, signatories in 165. India signed the treaty in 1993. So what I want to tell you? Mainly chemical weapons are being controlled by Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. Headquarters is at Hague, Netherlands. This organization will be taking care with respect to chemical weapons. Why it is in the news? In 2021 June, United Nations Security Council accepted that yes, Syria had used 17 times chemical weapons. Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical. This organization is important. Remember this. It is an independent autonomous organization mainly to control chemical weapons. Headquarters is related, headquarters is present at Hague. It has a working relationship with United Nations, but it will not work under one, one statement will be there. Organization for prohibition of chemical weapons works under UNO or it is a part of UNO. It is not works under UNO, it is not part of UNO. It, it coordinates with UNO, means both are independent bodies. OPCW is an independent body, it is not under UNO. It is just coordinates with UNO. That is very important. Very important. New Atlantic Charter. Have you heard it? These all are what you know. Up to now, what you studied will fetch you marks. Polity, history, economy, geography, science and technology, everything. But this marks, this all. These extra things which you read like, what is this new Atlantic Charter? These are like lucky drops. We will get you marks. Ah, somewhere I studied Atlantic Charter. Atlantic Charter, first Atlantic Charter was being signed at the time of World War II. Yeah, understanding. Atlantic Charter means a chart. Charter means what? A chart, a agreement. A global order, we have to stay together, we have to unite it together. One order was being created, which is called as Charter, Atlantic Charter. Why only Atlantic Charter, sir? Atlantic Ocean. Left side of Atlantic Ocean, what is there? Left side of Atlantic Ocean, what is there? Or map pointing. Atlantic Ocean. East of Atlantic Ocean, what is there? Britain, European countries. West of Atlantic Ocean, what is there? USA, whether they actively participate in World War II, so they made Atlantic Charter in Atlantic Ocean. So you countries come here, you countries we are fighting a lot, we will make one chart and we will follow it. Rules and regulations. Again, after World War II, in World War I, at World War II we have an Atlantic Charter, now again we thought that there is a requirement of another a charter, which is called as New Atlantic Charter. 80 years ago, the Atlantic Charter provided the basis for the construction of new global order after the World War II. Again, now we felt the Charter promises to work closely with all the democratic partners in resolving contemporary global issues. What are the contemporary global issues? Authoritarian powers like China, the devastating COVID pandemic and the expensive threat of climate change. Three problems. One is China. Second is climate change. Third is COVID. CCC. See, China, another see, COVID-19, another see, climate change. This three is the new global order. The current declaration is a reprise of the Atlantic Charter and is based on the conviction that West needs to be reboosted, 
reboot itself to cope up with the rise of authoritarian powers like China, the devastating COVID-19 and the expansive threat of climate change. So, new Atlantic Charter, CCC, Atlantic Charter 1, World War 2, reconstruction of global order, Atlantic Charter, new Atlantic Charter which is made in June 2021, CCC. El Salvador approves Bitcoin as legal tender. This information is enough. The first factual question. This type of will be there for bank exams, bank PO, bank clerk. El Salvador approves Bitcoin as a legal tender. What is Bitcoin? How it is a legal tender? This is all you will be doing in science and technology of UPS. So, El Salvador is a first country. Geographically, where it is located, El Salvador, Bolo? El Salvador, geographically, where it is located? South America. South America. It is South America or in the joining points of South America and North America. Nicaragua, Honduras, Panama, more any other country is there in between as a bridge? El Salvador, yes, it is there in Central America, joining points of North America and South America. The first country which accepted Bitcoin as? legal tender. Genetically modified crops, simple. Genetically modified crops, this is what I will tell you. I will redesign the gene or any gene which is having specific purpose, I will be implanting in this particular seed and I will be sowing it so that I will be getting a desired output. That particular crops is called as genetically modified crops. So, I will be redesigning the gene, I will be doing gene editing, so that it might be drought resistant or pesticide resist, pest resistant, such type of crops which I am getting is called as genetically modified crops. So, recently GM rubber, genetically modified rubber, Kerala based rubber research institute of India under the rubber board had developed the world's first genetically modified rubber plants tailored for the climatic conditions in the northeast. This is the first time any GM crop has been developed exclusively for this region after years of research in RIS biotechnology laboratory. So, prelims point of view. Genetically modified rubber is present where, is been designed where in Kerala. For which part of India? For northeastern India. This is the first rubber variety in the world. This is the first rubber variety in the world. Green hydrogen, very important this slide everyone, very important slide. Green, purple, blue, grey, black. I will tell you one, what I will do? Water, I will separate hydrogen, I will separate oxygen, H2O. I will separate hydrogen, I will separate oxygen. How? By electrolysis. What is electrolysis? A cathode, a anode, electricity is given, positive, negative. So, hydrogen will go to the positive. So, I will collect the hydrogen and you know hydrogen is a fuel. This hydrogen I will use for production of electricity. That form of electricity is called as green. Through renewable energy, water is renewable or non-renewable? Water is renewable. So, through water, if I am going to produce the hydrogen, it is called as green hydrogen. So, hydrogen I will be using for producing electricity. Purple, using nuclear power. Using nuclear power, if I am separating by using nuclear molecules like uranium or thorium and separating hydrogen and that hydrogen if I am using for electricity, it is called as purple. Blue, produced by Reforming of natural gas into carbon dioxide and hydrogen combination with garan, carbon capture storage, nothing blue. So, when the carbon has been captured, this captured carbon, I will try to again send it through electrolysis process and I will separate hydrogen. It is very complex process, but it is called as blue hydrogen, grey hydrogen by use of fossil fuels. Through fossil fuels, if I produce hydrogen, it is called as grey black synthetic gas produced from coal the synthetic gas which is produced from coal is called as black so how many are there green hydrogen purple hydrogen blue hydrogen gray hydrogen black hydrogen prelims point of view very important first one green bullet 
वाटर बाय इलेक्ट्रोलाइसिस सेकंड क्या है पर्पल बोले तो न्यूक्लियर ब्लू बोले तो कार्बन कैप्चर स्टोरेज टैंक्स फोर्थ ग्रे फॉसिल फ्यूल्स ब्लैक नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया मींस आसाम ओनली नो ममता अगेन ग्रीन व्हाट वाटर पर्पल ब्लू ग्रे ब्लैक नो 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 इट इज मैन्युफैक्चर्ड फ्रॉम केरला बट यूज्ड फॉर नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया द रबर इंस्टीट्यूट इज लोकेटेड इन केरला द रिसर्च एजेंसी इज प्रेजेंट इन केरला एंड दिस रिसर्च एजेंसी व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन केरला इज मेड रबर वैरायटी व्हिच इज यूजफुल इन यूएन हाई लेवल डायलॉग ऑन डिसर्टिफिकेशन लैंड डिग्रेडेशन ड्रॉट डीएलडीडी Dialogue on desertification, land degradation, and drought. Just remember this. What you all remember, you know, LDN, land degradation neutrality. There is a concept evolved which is called as land degradation neutrality. It mainly works for neutralizing the land so that the land will not become further degraded. So the land will become more moisture oriented. For that, there is a UN high level dialogue on desertification, land degradation, and drought. in order to reduce the drought conditions in order to reduce degradation conditions and to update to get new energy what is that land degradation neutrality yes what are the steps taken land degradation neutrality mainly to restore we are having lot of research centers international nitrogen initiative very important nitrogen is also very helpful the united nations sustainable development goals are the main focus of the 8th ternial conference of international nitrogen initiative prelims point of view was set up in 2003 under the censor sponsorship of scientific committee on problems of the environment scope and the international geosphere biosphere program these two people come together for international nitrogen initiative what it will do optimize optimize nitrogen beneficial role in sustainable food production mainly how to use nitrogen in a sustainable way nitrogen availability of nitrogen in soil is helpful for which crops availability of nitrogen in soil is helpful for which crops yes very good bhumika leguminous crops leguminous crops means what this peanut peas peas nitrogen is very very important so mainly to optimize the nitrogen there is a initiative called as international nitrogen initiative of scope as well as igbp international geosphere biosphere program to have a very good nitrogen in the soil levels nitrogen beneficial sustainable food production minimize nitrogen's negative effects on human health and environment resulting the program is currently sustained partner of future faith is a coordinated by steering committee mainly two bodies one is scope other is igbp mainly to what to sustain the availability of nitrogen deep ocean mission with your knowledge without seeing anything you tell me which ministry it might be ministry of shipping or what which ministry it would be ministry of earth science very good mamata ministry of earth science what would be there deep ocean mining what are present mainly we have rare earth metals nodules very high cost nodules are present in surface of the earth so deep ocean machine the cabinet committee on economic affairs has approved the proposal of proposal on deep ocean mining to explore the deep ocean for resources and develop deep sea technologies for sustainable use of ocean resources so mainly for the sake of sea tracking the seabed tracking the seabed and taking the resources for the sake of mining that is deep sea mining lidar full form lidar full form this is science and technology old question lidar lidar light detection and ranging light detection and ranging is a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of a pulsed laser to measure ranges mainly leader what we will do example light detection and ra and ranging i will send a light 
onto the water, into the sea. It will go somewhere, no, deeper, deeper when there is an opaque substance, a strong opaque substance like earth, it will stop. Now, I can calculate the height, distance. For that purpose, it will be useful. In the same way, the technology has been evolved. This lidar, why I am discussing here, the lidars are now specific to the minerals, specific to the metals. If I put the lidar, if there is oil specific or, or if there is any water specific or if there is any, any metal specific, at that particular location, it will go and it will stop. Then I can come to a conclusion that how much deep I need to do mining. That is lidar. Light detection and ranging. So, it will send a light and it will, it will touch the surface, it will return back. So, this calculation will be done, how, where it hit and how it returned back. With that calculation, I will be knowing the distance. For distance purpose, we will be using this radar. Prelims point of view, very remember this curve. How it is? Simple, prelims point of view. Huge heat waves are rotating around United States of America. A term called evolved, which is called as dome, heat dome which is called as omega block, see here, heat dome, this particular area on the earth surface is having high temperature, so that they named it as heat dome omega block, which is usually and found only in United States of America. So, prelims point of view, where we came across omega block, where we came across heat dome. It is mainly with respect to United States of America, with respect to increase in temperatures at summer seasons, prelims point of view. Ramagad Vishadari Tiger Reserve, Ramgad Vishadari Tiger Reserve, Rajasthan already have three tiger reserves named as Sariska, you know, Ranatambor, you know, Ranatambor, Sariska and last is Mukunda. Mukunda, Sariska, Ranatambur. Now the fourth is Ramgar Vishadari. Earlier it was wildlife sanctuary. Now it became tiger reserve. Now how many are there in Rajasthan? Fourth. In the month of June 2021, this wildlife sanctuary got tiger reserve status. Number one is Ranatambur, Sariska and third is Mukundara. And the fourth is Ramgar Vishadari tiger reserve. Now, how many are there in Rajasthan? Four. Recently, National Tiger Conservation Authority Technical Committee has given a note for Ramad Ramgad Vishadari Wildlife Sanctuary to be called as Rajasthan's fourth tiger reserve. Will be called as Rajasthan's fourth tiger reserve. The area that has been identified as the reserve area comprised of two forest box buffer zone. Mainly, you have to remember these animals. The sanctuary has lipots, sambars, chittals, wild boars. Smaller cats, Karkals, Chinkaras, Nilgai. Four, Ranatambur, Sariska, Mukundara, and the fourth is Ramgad, Vishadari. Agristack, simple. Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare, planned of making the complete data of agriculture. Farmers, complete data. Complete centralized computerized data of complete farmers in India. So, one particular website, one particular web platform will be created on that web, pla web platform. Every farmer and his land and which crop he is sowing, all the details will be provided. That particular scheme name is called as AgriStack. The union government has decided to give agriculture a shot of technology by creating a centralized farmer database. Remember that enough. Centralized database under the scheme called as AgriStack. In pilot project. In 100 villages of 6 states, no need to remember the 6, so it is a pilot project, not across India, they are testing now with 100 villages, with the cooperation of whom? Microsoft, complete centralizing data of farmers, their land, their sowing pattern, their way of doing agriculture, everything will be centralized, agri -stack. Now, you have to remember and that every farmer, very good, I forgot to tell this point, every farmer will have one agri ID which will be linked with is Aadhaar card. So, we can know with the Agri card, we can know how much he is earning. Why? Because again Aadhaar card is linked with PAN card and PAN card is there, then only I will open a bank account. 
everything is a cycle everything is a loop so farmer when he had agri stack he is having an agriculture unique identity which is linked with aadhar card aadhar card is linked with pan card so how much amount he is getting also will be noted why prime minister kisan so if income is more his kisan will be cut investment what is pm kisan money transfer in the form of investment to whom farmers see unique digital identification farmer id that contains personal details information about the land they farm as well as production and financial details each id will be linked to the individual's digital national id aadhar card please everyone read this content who are writing prelims i'm i'm very sure that from june 2021 to may 2022 10 questions will come from this 600 topics 10 questions will come take my word pradhan mantri anna data ai sanrakshan abhiyan simple pm aasha simple connecting market now what will happen means mainly mainly with respect to pulses oil seeds and copra pulses oil seeds and copra now the central government through minimum support price they will be buying this central government by minimum support price they will be buying this now farmer is not wanted farmer is not willing to sell under this scheme then the state government will buy at the market price from the farmers and the state government will sell it to the central government for minimum support price that means the difference is bared by whom state government so that the market price who is getting farmer is getting so central government is following only minimum support price but the state government is going giving market price the difference amount is bared by state government, state government. who is at benefit farmer so in order to provide to the farmer not only at minimum support price at market price the scheme is pm aasha so minimum support price the state government will give it to the central government but the state government will pay to the farmer at market price the difference amount is bared by state government samajh mein aaya who will procure private some private farms will be there they will be procuring for which the government will pay 15% to them there will be pss like pss means price support scheme price deficiency payment scheme price procurement and stock list scheme so there will be a movement of the goods but pradhan mantri anna data ai sanrakshana abhiyan biotech kisan program kisan full form it should be on you are going to write the prelims not me june happened long back june 2021 this is not class this is revision class krishi innovation on science krishi innovation science application network krishi innovation science application network biotech kisan objective biotech kisan program scientist farmer partnership scheme scientist farmer partnership scheme so that the farmer will be doing agriculture on scientific lines so that the farmer will be doing agriculture on scientific lines with the help of government what type of farming biotechnology oriented farming that is called as biotech kisan farming what is kisan krishi innovation science application network it follows hub and spoke model so it will be giving the information to all hub at center there will be hub there will be spoke around so information will be spread across biotech kisan program all government schemes also i will take class sage initiative just remember what is sage senior care aging growth engine the sage project is shaped on the recommendations of the empowered expert committee on startups for elderly simple sage in order to help elderly 
with the inputs like hand sticks or specs in order to promote startups in the process of manufacturing those goods which are helpful for elderly a government of india came up with a scheme called as sage which will be helping the stand ups who are working for elderly elderly what goods the sage project will select support and create a one stop access of elderly care products and services by credible by pumping startups by supporting startups which are manufacturing goods for elderly satat scheme in the june month this all schemes came satat scheme remember the heading sustainable alternative towards affordable transport sustainable alternative towards affordable transportation establishing a strong network for marketing the entire productivity conductivity of cbg what is cbg compressed biogas plants through various channels so by compressed biogas we are making the affordability very easy by not depending on what fossil fuel by not depending on what fossil fuel satat scheme pencil you know what is pencil tell me pencil kya hai child labor remember only one word child labor pencil platform for effective enforcement for no child labor a web platform it will be a web platform where all the child labor protection act child labor protection ngos child labor protection departments all are connected at one particular website which is called as pencil platform for effective enforcement to no child labor security and defense preventing drone attack someone youtube one video is viral now a muslim woman a not muslim woman a pakistani woman she was sitting in a meeting have you seen it is it is viral everyone will share easy work so it also reached me the drone everyone thought that the drone is moving so everyone thought it's a camera it is live it is there in youtube i thought to bring that also so suddenly what happened it was it, it is it is taking the camera view suddenly it came and it hit the woman how sulemani died who is sulemani how sulemani died iran supreme leader military supreme leader what sulaimani full name which sulaimani iran military supreme leader he was been killed by the drones only now drones are becoming threat in function halls also when we go to marriage it will be moving here and there only nowadays now it's becoming bombs so science and technology preventing a drone attack yes kasim sulemani kasim sulemani supreme military leader killed by drones so how to prevent the attacks by drones the need for an anti drone system shielding critical installations came under sharp focus after a drone attack on indian force air force base in jammu so so there is a thing which is happening with respect to drones you have to go through this agni p very important read this canisterized missile agni p is a canisterized missile means within minutes it will be ready whereas agni 5 agni 6 they have they will take time nearly 5 to 6 hours they will take canister missile means automatically it will be ready within 10 minutes for a war agni p is a canisterized missile this one canisterized missile nuclear also nuclear capable ballistic missile what is ballistic what is ballistic ballistic means what these are basics what is ballistic what is cruis ballistic follow parabolic path ballistic means follow parabolic path cruis it will escape it will meandering it will not come under the scanner that is cruise agni p 
is a first new generation advanced variant of Agni class of missiles, 1000 to 2000, weighs only 50 percent of Agni, mainly it is what? Canisterized missile, canisterized missile means ready to shoot, it will be ready within no time. Canisterized missiles, the missile is capable of launch at short notice through improvements in its storage and handling features, very quickly it will be ready for the war, that is called as canisterized missile, Agni P is a canisterized missile. It can be launched by rail, it can be launched on the road, it can be launched on the air also. Integrated theatre command, simple. Now, the government of India had established one integrated theatre command based upon the threat. Immediately, the military forces, the air forces, the navy, the logistics, they come together and they report to the chief of staff and they will take the decision. Before taking the decision of the chief of staff, there will be a theater command of ranks, four ranks and they will be taking the risk of giving advice to the chief of staff whether to go on war or not. That is called as theater command. In June 2021, a new command came into existence which is coordinating military, air force, navy with respect to the threats, the possibility of threat. So, this information they will filter it and they will send it to the chief of staff. What is chief of staff? Chief of defense staff. So, they will take the final decision and they will give the major decision to the prime minister and the prime minister is the final person to take the call. So, now earlier it was prime minister, then chief of defense staff, military chief, navy chief, air force chief. But now in between one more person came who is called as theater command. Based upon the threat, he will be taking the risk, you will be taking the decision. Integrated theater command is a unified command under which all the resources of the army, navy and air force are pooled depending on the threat. Depending upon the threat perception, they will come to a conclusion and they will refer to the chief of defense staff. So, new a theater command, integrated theater command came into existence to refer the matter to the chief of defense. Prelims point of view very important. Just remember the names, do not read too much. NASA, prelims point of view, what is this? They will ask. Two missions for Venus, Da Vinci code, Da Vinci plus Veritas. The project for Venus, the project for Venus planet by NASA called as Da Vinci plus Veritas. Da Vinci. Deep atmosphere is Venus investigation of noble gases, chemistry and imaging is the first US led mission to Venus, NASA. Veritas, Venus emissivity, radio science, insert topography and spectroscopy, map the planet surface to determine its geologic history and understand why it developed so differently from Earth. Veritas, read this. Veritas, a project for Venus. The Vinci plus a project for Venus from NASA. Envision is a European Space Agency led mission, its orbiter will visit Vision in 2030. Envision of European Space Agency, where, where Venus, where Venus, just remember that, where Venus, bird flu, China is famous for all wrong things. Bird flu. A man in China's Jingsu province has been confirmed as the first woman case of infection with a rare strain of bird flu known as H10N3. So, they created it. Earlier, H1N1 came. On the lines, I took this. H10N3, what? Bird flu. Human to human transmission is not possible only from avian influence, means from birds to human beings. H10N3, what is it? Bird flu. And the man died in China. Monoclonal antibody, in my body antibodies are there, which will be resisting the virus, any virus, bacteria. So, that antibody, if I manufacture synthetically, that antibody, if I manufacture artificially, that antibody is called as monoclonal antibody. Remember this. What is monoclonal antibody? In me, 
there are WBCs which are called as antibodies, which are naturally available. The naturally available antibodies are very strong. So what I will do by using the gene method, I will be manufacturing the same antibody. I will be cloning the antibodies. The cloned antibodies artificially is called as monoclonal antibodies. It is in the news, monoclonal antibodies. Prelims point of view. CART means what? Why it is in the news? Science and technology. Don't go deeper into science and technology. Just take the name and understand. CART cell therapy, cancer treatment, indigenous, indigenously developed, CART cell therapy for what? Cancer treatment. The climate, the chimeric antigen receptor T cell therapy emerged as a breakthrough in cancer treatment. IIT Mumbai and Tata Memorial Hospital in collaborated to conduct the early phase pilot clinical trial of the first in India. CART theory for what? Cancer. cancer. CART theory for cancer. Corbivax, a new vaccination which is found in India, in Hyderabad Biological Energy Limited, Corbivax, the new vaccine. What is Corbivax? A new vaccine which is manufactured by Biological Energy Limited of Hyderabad. China's artificial sun called as East, experimental advanced superconducting tokmak. Tokmak means a huge energy because of nuclear fission, tokmak. Already such is present where? In Europe. What is that name called as? What is that name called as? ITR, very good. The same tokmak is there in China by the name called as East. Experimental advanced superconducting tokmak which is having the energy of sun. East belongs to China. What is it? A tokmak. Tokmak means a huge energy liberator which will be producing huge heat equal to the level of sun. China's artificial sun is called as yeast. Nano urea liquid, urea is very costly and we, urea we import or export? Urea we import, we are very pure in, we are very poor in urea manufacturing. So most of the urea is imported. So because of which our foreign reserves are coming down, our balance of payments is increasing. Why? Because the imports are more. So what I have to do? I have to use urea very little amount. So what I did, nano urea liquid. We manufactured nano urea liquid so that at the targeted soil and the roots, this urea will be pumped. So that less amount of urea is enough to pump the growth of the plant. That is called as nano urea liquid. The Indian Farmer Fertilizer Cooperative Limited launched the world's first nano urea liquid for the farmers across the world. It has been indigenously developed at Nano Biotechnology Research Center, Gujarat, in line with Atmanirbhar. IFCO Nano Urea Liquid is a nutrient to provide nitrogen to plants as an alternative to the conventional urea. So, the same urea as a conventional nitrogen, at a little amount, I will be pumping at the level of roots. Indigenously manufactured. By which company? IFCO. What is IFCO? This is IFCO. Indian Farmers Fertilizer Cooperative Limited. Reports, quick reports. World Investment Report. Tell me, you studied a lot. Tell me, World Investment Report is given by whom? World Investment Report is given by UNICEDART, United Nation Conference on Trade and Development. UNICEDART, it is in the news. Global Leavability Index is given by whom? Global Livability Index, index reports are important or not? This report is given by whom? This report is given by whom? Global Livability Index, Economics Intelligence Unit, World Energy Investment Report, International Energy Agency, World Employment and Social Outlook, International Labour Organization, Sustainable Development, Niti Aayog, World Universities Report, Kyoko Koreli, Simons. What I will do, yes, this is the end of the session. Thank you.